Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Today is a mega compilation video with all of my summer DIYs coastal decor. Let's get crafting. This one is more advanced, but I wanna promise you all it's worth the work and it is so fun to build this one. I really enjoyed it quite a bit and I wanted to share this one as well because sometimes I like showing really easy ones here on my channel and sometimes I like showing more intense things. So what we're doing is we're taking some eight by 10 frames. We need four of them and we're gonna be using more of those painter sticks because y'all know that I really love those painter sticks and I, what I'm doing is I'm cutting out the frame first with my exacto knife all the canvas that's on it and I'm pulling off that extra so that I can keep those canvas pieces later and use them for other DIYs on another day now once I've got them all cleared and the staples are all removed, I'm going to measure these long painter sticks again. And you can see here that I'm cutting them down with my miter box again. And I'm going to make sure the size is right. And once I've got the size right, I'm gonna make sure I cut the rest of them to go along the bottom. Now you can see here that we don't wanna see this part that has the staple holes. We want it to be nice and finished on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some wood glue and hot glue so it's that long term short term seal so it lets it stay on there until everything's completely dry then on that once I've got the two frames together I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to create a little bit of a shiplap look by spacing them out and stapling those down onto the bottom of this little box that we're creating now this is the coolest thing because so far this is super affordable and just so cute already now we're going to take one of those long painter sticks we're not going to cut this one we're going to do it right here on the side of this box we're going to drill two holes and once you've got your two holes drilled all the way through you're then going to add some screws because this is going to become a tiered tray which is going to be so cute these are super expensive and i want you all to see that with some dollar tree products and some painter sticks you can make the coolest things so once you've got that first screw in make sure you shift it around so it's nice and straight my drill died at this point so I had to switch over to a regular screwdriver and you can see here once the two screws are in it's really sturdy and I put one on each side now here is another one of those boxes I've built two of them sometimes the boxes can be a little uneven because the frames can be a little wonky They're at the Dollar Tree for a reason. Sometimes they can be a little uneven in their sizing. So I just took a little popsicle stick, cut it down to size, and put it on that part that you saw me showing there. And then what I'm doing is now I'm just making sure the measurement is right before I drill my next set of holes to add on to the second tier to this little tray that I'm building. I just think that this would be so cute displayed on a table or you can also use it during parties and put food on them. I just, I love these so much and they're super cheap to make. So now to make sure we really secure everything, I'm just gonna add a couple staples on the frames that we glued together. You don't have to do this, but I wanted to make it really strong and sturdy and I have a staple gun, so I went ahead and did it. Now I'm gonna take my plunger stick. Yes, I said plunger. <laughs> Dollar Tree sells plungers and they have wood dowels. So I took off the plunger part and I took the dowel, cut it down to size with my miter box again, and I'm drilling holes so that I can add in some screws so we can have a handle at the top of our tiered tray. So go ahead and start that first screw in your painter stick. I always like to drill to make sure that it doesn't splinter anything. And then once you've got it in place, go ahead and drill everything together. Now this dowel is going to want to turn and rotate on you so just make sure you hold on to it as tight as you can as you start to screw together. Now at this point you can paint it whatever color you want. First I started painting it white and I, I always paint everything white and then I thought well hold on maybe I'll give it some blue because Coastal Farmhouse has been on my mind a lot since I want summer to be here so bad and I want to get outside so bad. So I'm gonna go with a really pretty icy blue and then I'm gonna distress with a darker blue, like almost a teal and some brown to give it that weathered beach look. So I'm just going around all of the handles and the outsides of the boxes and I decided not to paint the shiplap 
painter sticks that you see on the inside of me my tiered tray boxes I decided I wanted to give it a wood look so it had more of a beachy feel so once I had on that first coat of blue I'm going back in with a darker blue and I'm just dry brushing on some darker blue to make sure I give it a really pretty textured look with those different blues almost as if it has sunned out for a while and it's faded over time now I'm going to take that same mixture from earlier and I'm going to again use water brown paint and a little bit of black and then I'm even going to have a little bit of brown paint here because I want to keep adding it in while I'm also adding in that watery mixture and it just makes it look so beautiful once I've gotten all over that first top tiered piece, I'm going to go ahead and move down to the bottom. Now you do want to make sure to not make it too watery because that can start dripping all over the place. So just take your time and let it absorb. I went over each piece probably about two times to make sure the paint really absorbed in. The more you keep playing with it and adding in the brown and the black with the water, it really does make it look like that beautiful beach driftwood. So once you've got that all painted and it starts to dry, you then can go back over with some brown paint. This is when I'm really starting to distress things and you can see those colors really starting to come to life. And then where the screws are, I wanted to make them look a little rusty. So I added a little bit of brown paint and then you don't have to do this part, but I thought it would be really cool to add on some numbers on my tier tray. So I'm going to do a one and a two and you technically could put whatever you want on these or not paint them at all but I sketched on my number first and now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to hand paint on my numbers with some white paint and a fine tip brush once again and just take your time because whenever you are painting through these wood slats it's easy to kind of get it gets a little tricky right around where those seams kind of meet up and you want to take your time right on that spot. So once you've got that all done and the white paint is dried, you then can go back in and sand it to rough it up. So again, it looks like it's just been, you know, out in the sun and been used for many years, which I love that look. And then you're going to distress it a little bit more with some brown paint and you can style it however you would like for many seasons to come. Today for my DIY daily spotlight, I'm going to be sharing Yelena from The Blondie Next Door. Yelena is such a sweet individual and I have always enjoyed how kind she is in her videos. Her voice is very soothing to listen to. I love her accent. She makes beautiful DIYs all on a budget. Head over to her channel give her some love. She's going to be doing a coastal DIY today as well. And if you go over and check out her channel and you enjoy it, click the subscribe button, let her know that you're coming over from my channel and just give her some love. She is getting so close to 10,000 subscribers and I just would love to help her get there. She is such a hard worker and I really enjoy her friendship. If you're coming over from Yelena's channel, welcome. My name is Heidi Sambel and this is my DIY channel. I'm posting here all throughout the summertime so don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos. This project we are going to be making a lantern and we're going to take these long paint sticks, these painter stirrer sticks. I hear people call them all kinds of different things, but they come from the home improvement stores locally to you. And we are going to take the long ones and cut down eight of them. These are going to become the side structures for our lantern that we're making. And then once you've got eight of those all cut down to the size that you need, and they need to all be the same size, you're then going to go ahead and take some wood stakes that you would use in your garden. I see a lot of people use these around their gardens, but these are wood stakes that you can also pick up from your home improvement store. And I'm going to be using a combination of wood glue and hot glue for that long-term, short-term hold 
to make sure that it nice and strong bonds together. We are gonna have six of those. This is going to be the base of our lantern. I'm gonna leave all the measurements down below so that it's not making this video too complicated. So if you're needing the measurements, go ahead down to the description box and you'll see them down there. But I'm gonna go ahead and glue all of those six pieces together to create a very pretty, nice, solid base. Now you could do these with the painter sticks. I decided to use these wood stakes instead because I just liked how they were more substantial, thicker, sturdier looking. I just liked how they looked. But again, you can use painter sticks if you would like. So once you got all of those all wiped and cleaned up, because you could see there that I was pulling off some of that extra glue that kind of squirted out, you're gonna go ahead and start gluing on the sides. So again, I'm using the wood glue with the hot glue, long-term, short-term hold, and then to make it really strong and sturdy, we are gonna take our staple gun and we are just going to staple in a two staples on it to make sure that it's nice and strong. And by the time we're done with this thing, it is gonna be so sturdy and it is just gonna be so pretty on your front porch or wherever you decide to use it in your home. So now I'm putting on the other side and I'm just making sure that the sides match up and then I'm gonna move on to the next. And I'm just gonna keep putting the two corners on, making sure that the sides match up with each other so that it is nice and smooth on the sides. And then you can see even as I'm going up, I'm putting little dots of that wood glue and hot glue to make sure that the top and the bottom and the sides are all glued together and then adding two staples at the bottom. So as I get around the corner to my fourth leg, I noticed something started to happen with this and I thought I would just mention it all so you would know. And I noticed that towards the top, you could see that they're starting to bow in towards the top. So when you go to glue on these support pieces, which I'm doing right here, I cut down eight of these smaller painter sticks because I wanted to wrap them around the bottom and the top to create a nice, pretty finished look and a structure to it. I cut eight of these, but you can see here that it's a little bit not all the way up to the edge because I want, again, I'm gonna show you in a second, add another piece to it. But up here at the top, when I went to go put up this piece, you can see that it's not fully lining up. So I had to actually pull it out from each other and make sure that it was not crooked. And that just happens with wood. Sometimes it'll just shift on you. So you're gonna see here that as I staple it, I'm gonna pull it out. You can see what I'm talking about. It wants to kind of collapse in a little bit. So just make sure you pull it out, glue it into place that hot glue so it'll hold it into place while the, the wood glue dries, and then just staple it. And then I just flipped it over and did it on the other side, making sure everything was nice and straight and all glued and stapled together. Now, now, like I said earlier, you saw that I had a little bit of a spacing between those top parts, and I'm gonna show you in a second. I'm gonna fill them in with some really pretty smaller square pieces of wood that I just happen to have in my craft room. You don't have to do this. You could make those painter sticks that are coming around the bottom and the top the exact length, but I wanted to have a little bit more detail, so I'll show you that in a second. But right now at the top, we're gonna take some more of those wood stakes and I'm going to use my miter box. Now there's a straight cut and then there's a 45 degree angle cut. And you can see that I'm just going to cut at an angle and I'm going to allow this to create a miter edge at the top, which is going to make it look so high end and pretty. I love this little cutting toolbox. I'm gonna to link it down below as well as my staple gun. I get asked about it all the time. And then see here, all the four pieces all cut with that little side angle. Now they are all gonna miter together beautifully and look super high end. So here I am, I'm adding some more of that wood glue, hot glue, and I'm just gonna go around making sure every single side is pressed together really well so there's not a big gap. And then if you have any glue squirt out from pushing it together, just again, wipe that away so it has a nice clean finish. And then once you get around to that last side, I'm gonna set this over to the side just for a minute while I go back over to my actual lantern and add on this piece right here. So here is the piece I was talking about. I had this in my craft room. I thought this would be really pretty. 
So on those eight pieces that I cut down to size to wrap around the bottom and the top, four of them I cut a little bit shorter and the other four I cut a little bit longer so that I can put this piece on there. I thought this would look so pretty to add on this little detail where you have this little corner that's kind of popped up and it's just gonna fit in there nicely. I'm adding in some more hot glue and some wood glue once again because I just wanna make sure that this is built really well. And I mean, this cost nothing. At this point, these are just seriously painter sticks, stirrer sticks, and these wood stakes. And look at how we can build the most cool things from it. Now, I could leave it like this, or we could make it a little more special. You know how I like to do it here on my channel. I like to take it a little further and just challenge myself a little bit more each time. So I'm gonna take these long sticks. They're not shish kebab sticks, they're I always forget what these ones are called. Leave a comment down below. I think steaks? No, nope, that's not it either. Either way, these long shish kebab sticks, we're just gonna go with that name, but they're the really long sticks and I'm just gonna cut them down to size because I want to create a really pretty crisscross design work on the inside of this lantern and just add a little more something special to it. I thought that this would be really pretty. So you're gonna need two for each opening on your lantern. And you can see here that I'm simply just measuring it on the inside of the box first for my first cut. And now I'm just going back and cutting everything down to size so that it all fits perfectly inside of those spots. Once I had enough of them all cut, I'm gonna add in some hot glue into the corners and then I'm going to put them at an angle. I'm gonna go one way Make sure you hold it into place so it's nice and set. Add a little more glue on top of it so it's nice and glued in place so it doesn't move around on you or lift up. And then you're gonna go the other direction, the other corners, and you're gonna add some more hot glue and then just press them down. Now these are gonna wanna not lay flat that second one. So you're gonna have to hold it down for a little bit while the glue dries. But again, this was su super simple to do. So once I went all the way around with all four of those, I added some glue to the top and then I put on my miter top that we made earlier and at this point it just looks so pretty. I was so excited for this project and as my family was coming down to check on me to see how I was doing with this project, they all started saying, oh it's a lantern, <laughs> which I had this thing for lanterns. They weren't sure at first what it was. My husband thought at first it was a trophy box, which I laughed because you never know with me. <laughs> so once I gave it a nice coat of paint, I'm gonna take some rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm actually gonna braid it. I thought it would be really pretty to have a nice, thick, substantial rope on this. I braided it, brought the ends together and just hot glued them so that they were nice and secured. And then I actually used one rope bundle from the Dollar Tree. I had took three long pieces that were equal length and then this was the little piece that was left over. I just unwrapped it and I'm gonna use that to bring it all together at the end, those little scraps that you saw me there pulling apart from the rope. So I wrapped it around the top of my lantern. I added in some hot glue to make sure it stays there forever. I don't want it to come off. And then I'm gonna add some more hot glue right here and that scrap piece of rope that was left over after I braided these. I'm gonna just wrap that around a few times to make a very pretty finished look up at the top. I loved how this turned out so, so much. And then, you don't have to do this part, you can skip it, but y'all know me, I just love a little roughed up edges, especially because I love that coastal look. These are the supplies we're gonna be using for our craft. Some fabric, these branches that I cut apart from one big branch that fell off of my tree, and then some twine. Go ahead and take your drill, and you're gonna use your 
sticks on something that's raised up so you don't accidentally drill through your table. But I'm drilling about halfway into this stick and then I'm gonna add some glue. And then I'm gonna take a skewer stick. I think that's what the longer ones are called. I'm not 100% sure, but the shorter ones are the shish kebab sticks. I'm not sure. Leave a comment down below to let me know what the really long shish kebab sticks are called. But we're gonna use those ones because they're a little bit thicker than the traditional shish kebab sticks. And then you're just gonna glue them right down, cut them down to the size that you want. So that way they are nice and secure in your sticks that came from your tree. Then I laid down my little boat frame at this point onto a piece of fabric to help me get the right size that I need for my triangles. And I'm gonna cut out a whole bunch of different triangles and three different fabrics because I think it's so cute to mix up the fabrics. So I'm doing a denim, a white burlap, and then a gray and white buffalo check. You can use whatever supplies or fabrics you would want to at this point. I think these are so cute because you can really customize them. I know that there are a lot of decor stores that are selling these and they are selling them for like 20 bucks for a little boat. I know that the dollar spot at Target had these and I think they were about three bucks per boat and that is even crazy expensive. This is basically costing me pennies to make this thing and you can just make so many of them and give them away as gifts. I just think they're so darling. So here I am, I added a bead of glue and then I'm just gonna tap that right down onto the stick and then to help secure the flag so they're not just kind of flopping around. I'm going to take some twine, tie a little knot at the end so it looks like it's nice and tied onto a regular boat flag or sail. And then you're just going to glue that all into place. At the top of this boat, I decided to take this cute little topper that I found and I'm just going to glue that right to the top. But like I said, you don't have to do that. You can decorate them however you want. Then at the very end, I'm going to pull those nice cute sails out and glue them to the base of my boat and you are ready to decorate your house with them. Our supplies we're gonna need this keychain holder from the Dollar Tree and these three little wooden shaped houses that they have in their new craft section at all the Dollar Trees. These are gonna be transformed into something super cute and whimsical. We're gonna start by cutting off these little corner pieces. We don't want those, so you're just gonna go ahead and cut those off so that these can flush up next to each other. And then we're gonna also need three painter sticks cut down to size and I just sanded down the corners. They looked a little bit rougher and rounded at the very tops because they're gonna become the doors on these cute little beach huts that we're gonna be making today. So we're gonna make one of the houses a mustard yellow color and then the other two are gonna be white because we're gonna do something special with those and change them up so they all have their own little personality and we're turning this into a really cute, whimsical keychain holder. So that way, when it's summertime, you can put this up wherever you would normally hang up your keys. I just think that this is such a fun DIY and it's so colorful and bright. You can use it for other things too in your home. You don't have to only just put keys on it, but I just thought this was so cute to put by a front door for summertime. So our three little painter sticks, we're gonna paint them a gray, a pink color and then a pretty aqua kind of a light teal color we'll just go with aqua we'll say aqua and then once you've got all three of those painted you can move on to the next part which is going to be decorating the huts now we're going to take some painters tape and we are going to tape off some lines because this particular beach hut is going to have stripes on it so it looks very cabana beach look i think that is just the cutest look and we're going to use that same aqua color this one's just a little bit lighter than the door is going to be and so we're just going to take our time making sure when we paint I always like to paint away from the painters tape so it doesn't bleed underneath to get that first coat on and then we do want it to look a little bit streaky because we want it to look almost like a watercolor look so don't try to make it too perfect with a solid color at least that's what I did I wanted it to look a little streaky then that way it looks more like I said watercolor and then I'm taking that lighter color and I'm just adding in a couple lighter colors onto the doors to give it that weathered beach look I just think that this looks so pretty when you add that extra dry brush technique to the darker color now we're going to take 
six tongue depressor sticks and we're going to add some paint on both sides of them because these are going to become the roof line once we sandwich all of the houses together. We want them to be popping out more 3D on it because then it makes it look more whimsical and just really interesting to the eye when someone sees it. So here I am, I'm painting two of them the aqua color, two of them white, and then the last two are going to be a really light gray color that I'm just mixing together with the paints that I have over on my plate. And once I've got those covered front and back, then we can move on to even more fun things. I really felt like this whole DIY was just so fun putting it together and I hope you will all try it if you have these supplies or can find them because it's just, like I said, sometimes it's just fun to do little colorful projects that just bring us joy and sunshine during this time right now where we're all trying to be safe and healthy. So on the third little cabana hut I'm gonna add on a little banner at the top so first I did a line in gray and then I did all kinds of different color triangles that match the colors I'm going with and then I'm going back over with a little bit of black and I'm just creating a tiny little line at the top and then on my doors for my little huts I'm gonna paint some numbers on two of them I decided to go with 5 and 13 because I don't know, I just did. <laughs> you can pick whatever numbers you want that are significant to you. And then on the pink door, I went ahead and added a star. And I did that simply by just taking a pencil and did a star by connecting the lines, all the points that we learn how to do when we're kids. That's how I always get a good star shape because I am terrible at trying to freehand an actual star shape. I, that is one thing I have never been able to do. And then I'm just going to fill it in with white paint and you would never know that you did the star that way. Now we're going to go ahead and start gluing on our little huts. At this point, I was so giddy over this project. I just thought it was so fun putting this one together, like I've already said three or four times in this in this particular video clip. Then I'm gonna flip it over on the back side to really make sure it's nice and stable and not have any issues. I'm stapling it down, and I would recommend at this point taking it outside and spray painting the whole thing on the back white so it looks all cohesive and clean, so that way it looks like a nice finished product. And then once I flipped it back over, now we can start adding on all of the 3D elements to the project. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the houses and I'm just going to simply cut them down to the size that I need them to and you want them to all butt up to each other nicely. So you can see here that I'm doing the roof line on the inside of the mustard hut first because I want to make sure that it's not going to cause an issue with the one on the outside of it. So that way everything fits again, like I said, nice and snug. So now here I am, I'm doing the teal on the inside of the one that has the banner. And then I will come around on the outside and do that one next. And then at that point, I will move on to doing the roof line on the middle one because at this point we've already measured out the ones on the sides and they fit perfectly and then this last one we're going to be able to just snug that right in there then to secure it to make sure this doesn't fall apart on you i'm going around on the back side and i'm adding in hot glue just to make sure it's really strong not on the front side because we want to keep it clean looking but on the back side to really seal the deal and get them on there strong i also then added on the houses and now here comes an even cuter part. We're going to take some of the shish kebab sticks that we have from all of our barbecuing right now. And we are going to just make three little top flag poles. This is the easiest thing ever. You're just going to go ahead and add some glue. Make sure it's a nice dollop at the top that it's sitting in nice and strong. And then we're going to take some fabric. And it's really easy to make a banner. You just take some fabric, fold it in half. And I'm going to use this as a template so you can see that I did the first one so they're all the same size. You're going to fold it in half right at that crease line and you're going to cut your triangle avoiding cutting down the center of that fold because you want that to fold right over the flagpole. So here I am, I'm adding hot glue, I'm just folding it right over and pinching it down into place. And then once you've got all of your flagpoles on there, you can add on an extra hook on the back if you want it to be stronger. I will say just one hook being on the back will want it to just kind of tip. But however you want to hang it up, it's so cute. I hope you enjoyed this DIY.
For this project, we're going to be using a large pickle jar because my son and my daughter love pickles so much here in my home. We have a lot of these big jars that are always here. So we're going to create a sea glass look by taking some Mod Podge and adding a little bit of paint. You don't want too much paint in this. You want more Mod Podge than paint but you do want to make sure the color is in there. So you can kind of see here from my video, I had a lot more and I added in the color and I'm mixing it in because when this dries, you should be able to see through it a little bit where it has an opaque look versus being very saturated with the color where you only see the paint. I'm also going to be using a glass vase from the Dollar Tree. I thought that this would be really pretty to dress up as well. So I'll show you this one with this DIY together. So this is a two for one. So here I am. I'm just wrapping up that paint. And once it is dry, I'm going to take some twine, measure around the neck of my pickle jar, and then cut it. So that way I have a nice starting point for my twine that we're gonna be tying and roping all over this thing. So it really does look like that coastal look for summertime. These things are so expensive and this jar was basically free and it's the cost of rope or twine, whatever it is that you decide to use to make this. So here I am, I'm gonna cut down a really long piece you basically want a piece of rope or twine that is four times the length of the jar so you can see here i folded it in half and i'm going to fold it one more time to show you that this is four times the length of the jar this is so that we have the space to be able to tie them then you're going to take six of those with the same length you're going to take it you're going to slip it underneath you're going to put your fingers through that loop and pull it nice and tight go ahead and watch that a couple more times if you want to replay it but basically we're just doing a, a simple loop knot where you're just going to pull it through and pull it nice and tight now i'm going to be taking that and bringing it around the neck of the jar and then tying it in place and then we're going to take those six different ones that we looped on and we're going to just spread them out so they're evenly spaced around the neck of the jar now this is the fun part where we're going to do a little bit of a macrame look we're going to take two of them one from one side of the loop that we put together and one from the other side the right and the left and we're going to just simply do a loop around knot and then tighten it and then we're going to move over to the next spot we're going to grab the right and the left and then we're going to do the same thing again just doing a little loop around our finger pull it through and knot it this way we are now building out that macrame chain that's gonna go all the way down the jar and we're gonna just keep repeating that. As we go all the way around this jar, we'll be ready to move on to the next layer. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you connect all of your points. So you're gonna take the right and the left, loop it around your finger, pull it nice and tight, move on to the next one. Take the right and the left, loop it around your finger, and then move on to the next one. Once you get to the end of all of those, we're now gonna repeat the exact same thing, but we're gonna just go down to the next layer, and then again, taking the right and the left, and then looping it around your finger and tying a knot. This is super, super simple to do. I hope you guys have fun doing this one. I really enjoy doing it. I felt like it went really quick. And by the time I got to the end of the jar, it just looked so pretty, like a very pretty net that had been pulled over the top of this jar and we're doing it for just pennies. This is such an affordable DIY to do if you love that summer coastal look. So here you can see that I pulled them together and then I'm just going to continue on and do that next row and the next row and the next row all the way down. Now I counted that I went down about five of these ties that went all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to show you how to finish off the bottom but while I'm going through all these steps I just want to check in with all of you and say hello and to see what you all think so far of this summer DIY series. I have been having so much fun spotlighting all these different channels. Leave a comment down below to let me know what you think of this series, if you're enjoying it, if you're enjoying the channels that I'm featuring, what you think about them, which channel has been your favorite so far that I've spotlighted. I would just love to know all of your thoughts on that. Now when we get to the bottom of the jar, we're going to flip it over and I'm going to take another piece of twine and I'm going to tie it into a circle. And you can see here, I tied it on one side first. And then I'm going to come over to the other side. I'm going to open up that two pieces. 
it's kind of hard. I'm so sorry I'm off screen here, but you'll see in just a second. I'm going to let this whole thing play through so you all see it. But I'm basically going to keep pulling it tight and then just doing a simple double knot at the bottom of this circle that I'm putting here. We're basically having an end to this macrame tie that we're doing around our jar. So I just keep pulling it tight into another spot, doing a double knot, pulling it over to the other spot, double knot it over the other spot, double knot it until we have created a nice finished bottom. And then we're gonna add some hot glue to make sure those knots don't come untied and cut off the extra. So here's what it looks like. And then when you flip it over, it is just the prettiest thing ever. I love it so much. I have a perfect spot in my living room for it. Now for this next jar, the one that we said is a bonus two for one -er, here on my channel, I'm going to just take the twine and I want you all to see how simple it is to create beautiful things for our home. This is a simple one where we're just going to take some twine, add a little hot glue, and we're going to just keep wrapping it around until we get a very nice finished wrapped around thick amount of twine, however thick you want it. You can go all the way up to the top. I decided not to because I really wanted that sea glass to show through. So I'm just going to keep wrapping it and then when I get to the part where I thought I had enough, I went ahead and finished off the twine by pulling it nice and tight. And now I'm going to take some of these shells. They have shells at the Dollar Tree. I don't know if you all know this, but they have rocks and shells. Don't ever buy rocks and shells from other places because you can get a huge bag for a dollar. And then I just simply added it on. Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Let's get crafting. These are the projects we're gonna be working on today. And our first one up is going to be this cloche shell keepsake. I am so excited about this because I have had this cloche clock for a quite some time and I've been wanting to turn it into something special and I knew that I wanted to put something that was a keepsake inside of it. So for my coastal theme that I'm doing right now for the DIY daily series, I thought I would do shells. I thought, how cool could it be to have something like this if you have shells from a trip or if you just like that coastal look. Now I picked up my cloche clock from a thrift store but you can purchase these online and it's amazing how you can take something like this, take it apart and turn it into something really cool like a keepsake with these shells in it or any other things that you might want to display inside of them but I just thought for this coastal theme how cool would it be. So you saw I took out the clock from the actual base and now what I'm doing is I'm taking some shish kebab sticks and I'm going to be hot gluing on all these different shells. Now the important thing about this is to make sure that the shells are glued on really well. You can see that I'm taking my time to make sure each one is glued on properly so that way they're nice and straight as much as possible because if they're crooked then it's going to have a hard time for them to look really polished and clean. So just make sure that you hold them for the time that they're needed. You can see that this unicorn horn shell <laughs> you can see that i'm holding it there in my hand because that one for some reason was just having the hardest time to dry but all the other ones were pretty easy so you just basically add some hot glue and then you're going to just put the shell on and make sure it's nice and straight now when we start to put this thing together we're going to have different heights of these and i'm going to show you in just a second why it's super important to make sure that you get the height right because it can have a problem with the glass top the cloche part so now what we're gonna do is create a base. I used my glass dome. You can see here that I traced a circle around some foam cord. I did that twice and then I cut them both out. This is gonna allow us to be able to put those shish kebab sticks down inside of the foam cord so it's not gonna have any problems with them standing upright. So I'm just adding some hot glue to bring the two of these pieces together. And then I picked up some of my white burlap that I had in my craft room and I'm just gonna pull that nice and tight around all of the sides, making sure that the top part is nice and smooth as much as possible. This is gonna make it look really high end, making it nice and smooth and tight. Then I'm gonna cut off all the extra, so that way I don't have any bumping or issues with it not laying flat. And then I'm gonna check it again, make sure it all fits right, 
add some hot glue, put that right on, and now I can start adding on all of my shells. This part was really fun to do. Now, like I said, the important thing is, is you don't want your shells to be too high, so make sure you keep checking the height of the shells and how tall they are, especially with the dome. You do not want them to have an issue where you glue them all down and then find out that the shells are hitting the top of the glass. So I just had fun with it, mixing up the shells. Make sure you think about the colors. Don't put too many pinks next to each other or too many whites next to each other. It's nice to move them all around. And then when you're done, put the top on it and display it somewhere in your home. Today the supplies are going to be two by four pieces of wood that we're going to cut down to size. The cutting is super simple. I'm using my brand new saw table. I'm so excited I finally have invested in one of these. I've been saving up for a while and finally got one. And I'm just using straight cuts and a 45 degree angle cut. Now this wood is actually really old wood which is why I'm needing to sand it down really well because it came from the wall in between my living room and kitchen. Most people would see that wood as trash but for myself I saw it as a treasure and so I've been holding on to it and when I realized oh I can make cute little houses out of it I definitely knew what wood to be using and so basically these houses are going to cost me pretty much nothing other than the cost of paint and painter sticks that we're going to be using since this wood came from our house now I had so much fun with this part because I love painting I've always loved painting I love just you know getting my hands dirty and just playing with whatever mediums that I'm working with when it comes to painting a project so for the houses I painted a few of them white and then I'm gonna go in with some more fun colors because this is my coastal week here on my channel and I'm going to be adding in some coral some really creamy pretty citrusy orange and then a really pretty mustard yellow I thought that these would look so cute all together with them being distressed some almost think like a little village next to a seaport the coast I just think there's something so cute about them and it makes me think that they're summery plus the colors lend really well going into fall time and because I have so much wood from that wall I'm actually planning on making a ton more of these with different colors throughout the year because I just love these that much I guess now for the rooftops I'm gonna take the long painter sticks because they're a little bit thicker than the smaller ones and I'm gonna just cut them down to size for my rooftops a tip about these painter sticks make sure when you're putting them up on the house that has the peak right in the middle you're going to want to make sure that you kind of overlap the house roof up at the top just a little bit and you'll see it towards the end of the video but you just want to make sure your roof line they, they match up perfectly up at the top so one side needs to be just a tiny bit longer than the other side so that they come together nicely at the top of your roof and then as you can see here I've painted them all different colors because I just thought it was so cute to have this different interest in all these different houses and make them look so unique to themselves as if you would see it in a little town and then for this particular house how I cut the wood I stood it up on its side and then did my 45 degree angle cut so that the roof line is coming out more of a shingled roof out towards the front I thought that that was a cute touch just to turn the direction of my cut lines and then I'm just adding on two pieces up here at the top that are the same width for my painter sticks and then I'm going to just come on into the other houses where they are going to be meeting up at the top as you can see here. I'm taking one that's a little bit longer like I mentioned and one that's a little bit shorter and just perfectly lining them up there at the top. Now for my glue I'm using wood glue and hot glue for that short term long term hold. I really like the idea of doing both of them just because it really does allow you to have a nice quality finished project versus over time if you were to drop them they could just pop right off with hot glue so I really like to use a little bit of wood glue anytime I'm ever working with glue 
Now the crazy thing is, because these all came from my walls pretty much, I'm, I'm spending basically pennies to make these and people charge so much. Now we're gonna take some tongue depressor sticks from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna just cut them down to size to create some really darling doors. This actually felt like the perfect size for these little houses. I love the width size of them and so I'm just gonna cut them at all different angles and then I'm gonna take some drywall nails. I found that these ones were the closest look to a chimney that I could get because the top of the head was a little bit wider because it's for drywall and I just went ahead and added a couple of nails in each one. Some of them only got one, and it was to create a chimney smokestack look to them. I just think that this was such a cute detail, and again, pennies to make these. I have been seeing these on Etsy, and people are selling these like a set of three houses for so much money, friends. Again, you can tell that the wood was free, the painter sticks cost a dollar for three of them, paint you probably already have it, popsicle sticks, tongue depressor sticks, again you probably already have it. These things cost pennies and when I see that they're being sold for 40, 50 bucks, I just feel like, oh friends, <laughs> save your money. Unless, unless you don't want to make them and it's easier just to buy them, then I support your decision. But I just want you all to see that taking something like some scrapped leftover wood really can make such a huge impact. Now here in my houses, I'm gonna add some windows. My husband was kind of making fun of this house in particular. He's like, do the people on the second and the third floor not get windows? <laughs> which made me laugh, but I, I personally like them spread out. So every house, just have fun with it and just create windows that you love. Our project that we are gonna be working on next is this <laughs> super cute seagull DIY. Friends, I really wanted to get in a seagull because seagulls were all over the place where I grew up. And I'm gonna tell you all a really funny story in just a second while we're making these. But to get started, we're gonna take three foam squares from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna do the baby bird first. We're gonna take our craft knife and in a little bit you're gonna see I'm gonna switch over to an actual kitchen knife but I'm gonna create a slope down the back side of that shape because we're creating the top of his head and then the tail down at his body so you can see here that I've just sloped it down and now I've moved over to my kitchen knife and you can see that I'm shaving out almost like a mountain you want the top peak and then you want to keep shaving away at the front side of the body so that way you're rounding it out and then when I get down to the bottom I'm just rounding and rounding and rounding and then I come around to the back and I'm rounding off the back and the little booty of the bird and I'm just creating this cute almost like a banana shape but you know, a bird's body. So here I am, I'm shaving off around the bottom because I really wanted the bottom to be emphasized that it was round and just like a chubby little bird. <laughs> the whole time I was making this, Miriam would not leave me alone. She was by my side the entire time asking me how I was making the bird and she was so excited that I'm making a mama bird and a baby bird and so here you can see that it's all rounded at the bottom and the very, very, very bottom is absolutely flat where the bird can be able to be stood up and put on a shelf somewhere. So now we're gonna move on to the mama bird. We are going to take two pieces. I'm going to Put them just like this where they're off each other a little bit because we want to be able to create the exact same shape and this is going to allow us to be able to make the head and then the chubby body at the bottom and we're going to go through the exact same steps now a funny thing <laughs> i wanted to share about seagulls i just thought this would be fun while i'm showing you all these steps when I was a teenager and we used to go to the beach all the time i had a brother who really 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 wanted to be buried in the sand and would not leave everybody alone until we finally did it. And so we were like, fine, we'll bury you in the sand. Well, another sister, while my brother had the towel over his head and he was being buried in the sand, my sister took popcorn that we had 
<laughs> and she dumped it all over because we had finished burying him in the sand. She had dumped it all over him and a huge herd, we had no idea how many seagulls were going to come, but a huge herd of seagulls came and started pecking all the popcorn and he eventually figured out that there were seagulls all over him and it was the funniest thing and we had to eventually shoo them all away because there were like a hundred seagulls on him. <laughs> it's probably one of my favorite beach memories. Okay, now at this point we're going to go ahead and cover our seagull. We're going to take a long rectangle piece and we are going to put the bird right in the middle and cut slits up the center point of it just like you see here. Now I'm wrapping around the front of the bird's body first and I'm cutting away that fabric and gluing it into place. And then we're going to bring that piece down around the front of him and we're going to pull it as tight as we can. You want to pull this really, really, really tight because the tighter and smoother it is, the more it looks like you've actually sewn this little bird and it's a cute little stuffed animal bird, but we're using super, super cheap products that are really affordable and cost efficient and it's way faster than having to pull out a sewing machine and stuff the bird and all the cuts and measurements this is so quick this whole thing each bird probably took me maybe about eight minutes to make they were so fast to make i wouldn't even say 10 minutes but if you're new at crafting and you want to try this just know that it might take maybe a little bit longer maybe about 30 minutes if you're taking your time with it so you can see that i brought it really tight around the front I folded down the sides where we created those slits and then glued them around his back. And now at the bottom, I'm just pulling everything as tight as I possibly can. I'm using a felt fabric and that's gonna allow you to really stretch it and mold it. And then as I'm getting extra fabric, I'm cutting it away and I just keep pulling it as tight as I can, pulling it, pulling it, add more hot glue, cut off any extra flaps. And then at the bottom, it should be nice and flat and snug and your whole bird body is nice and smooth. Now comes the cutest part of these birds. We're going to add on twine legs because why not? They should have long little skinny legs. So we're going to take two pieces of twine that are the same length. We're going to add some hot glue and then we're going to put him right on another piece of felt and sketch around the body of him so that we have the right size and glue that right at the bottom so it hides his legs and it's nice and clean and finished. So if someone picks it up and looks at it, they'll think that you bought it from the store. And then now we're gonna tie two knots, one at his knee and then one down by his ankle so that these can dangle over a shelf. Are you dying of laughter? Are these birds not the cutest thing ever? <laughs> like I'm, I'm laughing so hard as I'm making these. And just wait, you're gonna see Miriam's hand come in and out a ton because when she realized I was getting close to it, she comes back and just will not leave. And she was just so excited to see them. So now for the feet, I'm taking two pieces. You saw that I doubled it up and I just cut that, that shape that I needed. And it's almost like a little shovel or the shape of a bird's foot, like you can see here. And I'm just sandwiching that on so that cute gingham yellow fabric is there. And now I'm doubling it up to make him some wings. Well, I'll say her, because Miriam has dubbed that this is the mama bird and the baby bird. And we're only gonna glue down the front part of the wing and then the middle part and leave the back of the wing flapped out so it looks like it's fluttering its little wing. And then for the beak, I'm just gonna take a long, almost like a rectangle shape, or with a little bit of a triangle point. And then I just wrapped it in some fabric, added in a shish kebab stick. I'm adding on some yellow paint and some orange paint to give it some depth and some texture because this is really probably the most colorful thing on it and I really felt like this needed to really have some personality. And then I'm just gonna take that little beak that we've just created. I'm gonna cut a hole into the bird's body and then I'm just going to glue it right into place. Now at this point, our little bird is looking so adorable. I want to make 50 of these. That would be really weird if I had 50 of these on a shelf in my house, but I would love it. I would never be in a bad mood being around these. And then I'm now gonna just take some buttons and simply add on some buttons right at the eye. Make sure you give a nice dollop of glue. Don't burn yourself. Take your time with this part. And here's Miriam. She kept saying, cheep, 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 <laughs> cheep, cheep, cheep.
For the next DIY, I picked up this large hurricane from my thrift store and then these other four pieces are from the Dollar Tree. Now funny enough, this hurricane that I got from the thrift store is the same exact shape as the small one from the Dollar Tree so I really scored there. But I wanted to show you all how to make a larger one and a smaller one of these hurricane stands. I just think they're so pretty for spring going into the summertime. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some E6000 and some hot glue. Now E6000 bonds glass together really Really well and then that hot glue it holds it short term while that E6000 sets over 24 hours. Once that's all dry I took these outside my candle stands and I went ahead and spray painted them white. So here you can see me adding the smaller hurricane to one of those candle stands and then I'm going to repeat that process with the larger one and to add some texture and make it look more high-end something that you would see at Pottery Barn or Pier 1 Imports I went ahead and took some rope and wrapped it around certain parts of those candle stems and then added some candles and some small rocks or shells inside to finish the look. If you don't know, I have another channel called Heidi Sambel Home, and on that channel I post about our home renovations, clean with me's, and decorate with me's. I love posting over there on that channel, so come on by if you like the type of content, and click the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos there as well. I'm going to be taking these wood boxes that you can get from the craft section at the Dollar Tree as well as these stacking blocks that are in the toy section at the Dollar Tree and together we're going to combine them into a really pretty storage unit. Now for my look I'm going to be going with a rustic coastal look almost for like a boys room kind of a theme. Think like Abercrombie and Fitch like that's the kind of look I'm going for with this look or even like Hollister that kind of look so what we're going to be doing is taking all of the inserts out of the box frame now keep in mind these are size sensitive I think they must be made at different times and that must be the reason why they're different sizes I can't imagine why they would be different sizes if they're cut in a manufactured building but for whatever reason they're different sizes and you have to be aware of which box goes in which insert so just keep an eye out for that maybe even number them as you're taking them apart because I actually ran into that issue myself so the fun thing about these is that you can custom design them however you want they have become a little popular here on YouTube but just in case you haven't seen them I wanted to show you how cool this could be to paint it whatever color you want and since I'm doing that coastal theme right now on my channel I thought that this would be really fun to share so once I've got my stripes in the front I came around the backside painting all of the rest of it that pretty teal aqua color to complete the look and finish it looking polished. Okay, once we had the blue stripes all done, I decided to add a white stripe because again, like I said, I'm going for that very rustic beachy look and I love the idea of there being multiple stripes on the front of these boxes. Now again, you don't have to do this coastal look like I'm doing it. You can do whatever you want with these and go with a fun theme and I think that is the reason why I wanted to feature these here on my channel today because these boxes have so much potential to do so many cute things and you can store all kinds of things in them. You can use them for jewelry, you can use them for essential oils, just all kinds of really great little items that you want to corral into one space. I think that this could just be so fun to have anywhere in a bathroom, in a linen closet, even on a shelf in a bedroom, just a fun thing to keep supplies in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're keeping everything flat and on surface because like I said some of the boxes can be different sizes and depth so just make sure the fronts are nice and flat and I'm using wood glue and hot glue for that long term short term hold and then to make it look more high end I decided to take some of the stacking blocks and I'm going to put those on as the feet of this project because it will help raise it up and really give it a nice look so I'm going to put two blocks on each of the corners to make 
make it nice and raised up and then I'm going to put a supportive block right in the center that way so it helps any pressure that might be coming down on it over time especially if you were to put something else on top of this box how cool could this be as a organized thing to have in your home and just to like I said corral things in so now in the front Continuing on with my theme, that rustic coastal look, I'm gonna now sketch on some really big numbers, kind of like you would see down at a seaport when you look at boats and things are numbered down there. I just thought that this would be really cool. I'm planning on putting this in my boys' room because they already kind of have a coastal beachy theme in their room. So I'm just gonna add on some darker numbers. And then once I've got all of my numbers all painted on, I can move on to the next step. Now, again, I'm going for that rustic coastal look. At this point, this might not be your style because I know that we like a lot more white. I personally even like a lot more white. At this point, I was actually feeling like maybe I should have painted this white, but it's going in my boys' room, so I'm trying to be considered that they don't want everything white in their room. <laughs> now, this particular step right here, I'm taking large tongue depressor sticks, and I cut them down to size to put them at the back of the box where those original holes were. I actually wish I had done this earlier in the steps, so if you do try this DIY, why cover up the holes first and then add in that paint on the back to try to help conceal it. Make sure you do this because otherwise the things you put inside can fall out the back side of the box over time and cause the, you know, boxes hard to be put back in. And then to go along with that same rustic look, I painted the inside of the boxes with a dark white wash of the dark gray paint that I had, or I guess a gray wash. I wouldn't say white wash in that point. <laughs> I don't know. So now I'm taking some of those stacking blocks and you saw me glue them on and I'm using my staple gun to just secure them into place and then to finish it off, I just distressed it. Our project today is going to be using these printables that I have created for you. Four of these 11 by 14 frames and some foam core because our inspiration has come from Pottery Barn. I could not believe that they were charging $521 for these prints. The sizing on the frames is pretty much the exact same and I'm doing this project for six dollars so you're going to take the backing from the frame you're going to trace it onto some foam core and you're going to just simply cut out four of those then you're going to take your frame outside and you're going to spray all four of them whatever color you want i went with a pretty tan taupey color and then you're going to come back inside while that's drying cut down some strips of cardstock. I did it where it's one by 12 inches long, and then you're simply going to glue a border around your free printable. You could go through the efforts of matting it and cutting out the foam core, but friends, this looks just as good and people typically cannot tell that it's not an actual store-bought mat. It looks almost exactly the same. So then what you're going to do is you're going to pop your foam core inside the frame and you're doing it this way so that you have a nice straight print. You're going to go ahead and glue that in and then once you've got that all straightened out for the four art pieces, you're going to take that back out, insert your glass once your frame is dry and then you're going to put your foam core artwork right back inside and then on the back I just used some twine to create a hang up option. Our next DIY is using the same printable and it's only because I want you to have another option if the frame idea is not for you. I want you to be able to see that there are so many cool things you can do with a free printable. So what we're gonna do, we've seen this a bunch on Pinterest, it's super easy to do. Take some painter sticks, cut them down to the size that you need 
and then simply glue your artwork right to it. This costs pennies to make it, and again, you get that high-end, beautiful, coastal, boho look without having to spend a ton of money. So now a tip that is very important when you're doing these frames, make sure you line up your painter sticks just like you see me doing here. I add one side and then I do the other side and then I also add on my twine. You wanna make sure you line everything up. Funny enough, I actually did the shell upside down, so ignore that part during the reveal, but have fun with this and make your home beautiful. Our supplies from the Dollar Tree are going to be these wood rounds, some popsicle sticks that are more like tongue depressors, and wood skewers. And I laughed so hard because so many of you kept calling them s'more sticks when I didn't know what they were called last video that I did on Saturday. You all had me laughing so hard with all of your different comments. Thank you everyone for trying to help me figure out what they were called. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these sticks these tongue depressor sticks and we are going to cut down one of the sides so that they're flat so you can see how I'm putting them up to each other because we're going to be creating one big piece of wood that we can cut into a shape and we're going to be doing as you saw some cute little birds and I want you to think almost like a crane type bird where they have a long beak and they can peek their little nose down into or their beak down into the sand and get the little clams or the little the crabs out of the sand i just think that this is so so cute these little bird bodies so i went one direction and now i'm going to go the other direction now another thing i wanted to share was that so many of us have disney plus and i don't know if you have seen the short video that disney plus came out with called piper go and watch it it is the cutest funniest little Disney short about a little bird who's trying to figure out how to pick out those little clams from the sand. My family and I laugh every time we watch it. It's so cute if you have Disney Plus, go look it up. I'll link it down below in the description box if you need the name for the video. So as you can see here, I went one direction and then I went the other direction. And on this side that I'm sketching on, you can see that I kind of shifted the pieces of wood around because I wanted to give it that shiplap look. And it also just helped it to be stronger so that when I went to cut it, which we're gonna do in a second after I'm done sketching, it would stay nice and strong and secure. So here I am, I'm just sketching on a couple little bird bodies, a mama bird and a baby bird. And maybe I have this whole maternal mama bird, baby bird thing in my head because I'm thinking of that Disney short where I just thought those little birds were so cute. And that little bird, when he just gets creamed by the wave, it is so, it's just the funniest little video. So here I am, I'm cutting out my little bird body. Now I will recommend that these are pretty easy to cut through. Use a pair of scissors that you're not afraid to dull because when you do cut, popsicle sticks or wood with scissors, it can dull them. Definitely do not use your fabric scissors on this project if you have a pair of fabric scissors that you use to sew with. But go ahead and cut them out and take your time going around. And if you see that you're getting stuck on some spots, you can see that I'm kind of breaking it away. And then I just keep cutting and just keep cutting until I get all the way around to create the shape of the bird body. Now, how cool could these be? for any theme, any season, to be able to have this big piece of wood like this that cuts easy with a pair of scissors. You could do so much with this idea. And this came to me in a dream. Yes, it did, friends. Once again, I'm dreaming about crafts. Now that we've got the bird body shapes all cut out, we're gonna take those wood rounds and we're gonna drill down into the wood round just a little bit. Don't go all the way through. We wanna have a base inside so that we can put our skewer sticks down inside. Now I created one longer than the other when I cut them down because like I said, we're doing that mama bird, baby bird thing, like that maternal instinct, I don't know. Again, I just feel like mama bird and baby bird is the way to go for this craft project, friends. So here I am on the back side. I'm taking some of those popsicle sticks or tongue depressor sticks and I'm cutting them down to create 
a bordered edge to secure the stick to the back of the bird. So I kind of created a little channel for it to sit down in there. And then I'm taking a stick and putting it right on top and just making sure that it's glued on there really nicely and looks nice and polished on the back side. So here's what it looks like when it's standing up. And either side that you look at it, it's gonna be really beautiful and pretty. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna take some water, some brown paint, and a little bit of black paint and we're gonna mix them all together to create a really fast, easy stain. I love doing this because it washes off your hands and it's not oil-based like regular stains can be. Plus, I already have brown paint, black paint, and water in my house, and I don't have to go out trying to find an expensive stain. This costs me pennies to do. Now we're gonna take the pointy part of the skewer stick and we're gonna glue that right on to the little bird's head and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take those popsicle sticks or tongue depressor sticks. I keep feeling like I need to say that, but it's the thicker one. And we're gonna just make sure we have that exact same put support system so that they don't break or have any issues. So go ahead and glue all that down. And then once you're done, you can go ahead and start painting your little birds. I went with a blue color for the mama bird and then a really pretty gray color for the baby bird. So I went on the back and the front making sure I covered it all up. I ended up painting the beak a yellow color and then I also added in some white to make it look very beachy and just really made it look nice and pretty with a little pop of color. And then now I'm gonna take some of this greenery from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna glue it around the base. And then I'm gonna take some rope or some twine, whichever you have, and I'm gonna just wrap it around the bottom of it to create that really pretty tall grass look that you would see at the ocean. And then on the bottom to finish off the look, I'm gonna take a piece of felt, I traced it, cut it down to size, and now I'm just gonna glue that right onto the bottom so wherever it sits in my house it doesn't scratch anything and it just looks really pretty and polished. We need two frames, some rope, and then we're gonna be using some different paint, white and blue. This fabric, I had pulled it, but I ended up not using it in the end, and you'll see what I'm gonna be doing. And then two pictures to put inside your frames. So we are gonna be taking the rope, and the trick with this is that you want to first put the rope on and then kind of curl it out towards the inside of the frame. So you're going along that inner part of the frame versus having that gold showing where you can see that it is a frame that's not just wrapped all in a rope. I felt like that made it really look polished and finished. And then when you go around the corners, play with the rope, bend it and manipulate it before you glue it down. So that way it really does take that curve nicely versus you're struggling with it and it doesn't look like it's sitting in there nicely. And then when you get to the sides on the ends, I untwisted my rope just a little bit on those spots so that way it spread out the rope some to cover it up even better and then I went back with the twist again and brought it around that curve. So you're gonna see me do it right here. I stretched it out and then I'm gonna keep it twisted again and come around that side. This really does finish the look and make it look really polished and high end. So at the point when you're in the end spot, you're just gonna take it and bring it around the back, flatten it out a little bit, and then here it is nice and covered with all the rope. Now we could leave it like this and put our two frames together or we can make it look something really special and custom, which is what we're gonna be doing next. So on the inside, I really wanted to make sure that you can only see the rope, so I decided to add just a little bit of that white like you saw. And now I'm going to lay the frames right next to each other so that the rope 
is taped off at the exact same spots on both of the frames. And then I'm going to take some white paint and I'm going to massage that into the rope making sure that I get all of those crevices and all of those teeny tiny little nooks and crannies that can be a little tricky to paint when it comes to rope. So just make sure you just keep tapping it in and keep adding in paint as you go. Now I really think this is so pretty. This really does remind me of being down at the beach. Sometimes they do paint rope down on those piers and it just looks so pretty when you see the rope painted in some spots and then you have the regular natural rope. I really love how this looks. So once we're done with all the white, we're going to actually add on another color. And the cool thing about this, you can add on whatever color you would like. Since I'm going very nautical for this DIY, we're going to be adding on a really pretty American blue. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to position my tape, making sure they're at the exact same spots so that they all look nice and even. And then I'm just going to cut it and wrap them around because I want to make two blue stripes on each of the frames going down, which will really make it look high end. Something that you would pick up at maybe Pottery Barn around the summertime. So here I am, I'm just wrapping it around nice and tight and then make sure you tap it down into all those little crevices of the rope because you don't want it to bleed on accident. It could really mess up the project. So here I am, I'm at the very end and now I can add in a really pretty blue. Again, you can do whatever color you want, but I just, I love this blue color right now. I've just been really digging on it and so I've been using it a lot of my DIYs. So again, we're gonna press down the tape and then just keep tapping it into the spots. And then once you've got both of those frames done, you can go ahead and take off the tape and it's going to reveal the coolest look to these frames. Now. You could just always put the backers on them and stand them up somewhere on a shelf or a bookcase, wherever you want to put them. But I decided I wanted to have them hanging with each other. I thought this would be really pretty to hang up in a home somewhere. So I'm taking off the tape at this point and then I'm going to make sure that again, these frames are going to be perfectly aligned. I think that is the trick with this. So on the back side, when I put the frame back together, I cut off the support leg because we're not going to need that. And then I just glued it down. So that way when it's up against a wall hanging up, it's not going to have this thing that can keep flapping and moving around. And then I, I'm not going to change out these pictures ever because I really want this to be a memory that we preserve for our family when we went to the beach. And I am just putting those in with a little bit of hot glue and I'm just simply securing them. And now I can flip it over. I added a top hanging rope so that way I can hang it up somewhere in my home. And then I'm going to take two more pieces and you can see that I'm flattening them out so this lays really nice and flat against the wall and I'm gluing them all down. And then make sure again that the frames are perfectly aligned so that way it's not hanging crooked because that could be such a bummer. You went through all that work and then it's crooked. So here I am. I'm just adding in the last little bit of the rope to complete the look and then you are ready to hang it up somewhere in your home. Our supplies for this DIY are going to be three of these eight by 10 canvases, some rope, and then a hard sign that you can pick up from the Dollar Tree. In fact, all of these are coming from the Dollar Tree, as well as some thicker tongue depressor popsicle sticks. We're gonna be using all of these supplies to create a beautiful, bright, and coastal looking crate. Now you can paint these whatever color you want, but I just thought this coral color when you see the finished look is going to be so pretty for the summertime to use. And you could even take it over into the fall time as well. And technically in the springtime too. So you can see there that I removed the canvas fabric. I always like to keep the canvas fabric, but I pull off the sides just because those are bent and stapled. So I always just put that to the side to keep it. And then the scraps, I throw them away. And now I'm going to take that frame, the wood frame, and I'm going to make my mark line and I'm going to use my craft knife to score this board and it'll snap really easy. I scored it three times and then once you've got it snapped, you're going to want to cut off any extra hangover 
that you can see here that I'm needing to cut off. And sometimes you have to turn the board over a little bit to make sure you get it all. I just keep rotating it until I get every part where it's nice and smooth. Now we're gonna take our hot glue and we are going to glue that board down onto the frame or the frame onto the board. And now we're gonna take those tongue depressor sticks. So here I am, I'm going to match two up together to start and I'm just going to cut off the tops of the rounded part of them. We don't want those parts. We want them to be nice and flat. And then once I've got that, those are going to be our supports to build up our crate. But we're going to just go ahead and just take more sticks and we're going to keep cutting them all down because we are going to need 16 of these. The 16 are going to allow us to be able to double them up so that the support is really strong. You could get away with doing eight, but I highly recommend if you're building a crate, you want it to last long term. So go ahead and cut 16 of these because then what we're going to do next is we are going to be gluing two together so that they're really strong and sturdy. This is going to allow the crate, like I said, over time to not have any issues with anything being in it and not being able to support it. We want it to be able to be strong enough. Now we're going to take those sticks that we have created where we're doubling them up and we're going to glue them in to the corner and then we're going to use our staple gun. I use this thing all the time. I'll link it down below in my description box if you want to see the one that I'm using. And then, so you can see here, I'm putting them in the corners. I'm going on one side and the other side so that every corner is covered with these sticks that we have doubled up. And I'm just using two staples on each and every single one. And now at this point, once you've got your frame, you're gonna see that these are nice and snug and secure and really strong. I'm gonna start sliding on my extra two frames. I'm gonna take one to the middle point and one up at the top. Make sure you add your hot glue in there to really make sure you're securing it. And then also add in those staples. Now at this point, we're gonna create a pretty coral color. I didn't have a coral on me and it's really easy to make coral. You just take some white, some orange, and a pink, and then add back in some more white if you feel like it's still gonna to be too dark, and then just simply mix it all together and it makes the prettiest color. So again, orange, pink, and white, and you just mix, mix, mix until you get it to the look and desire that you want. Now I wanted it to be a really bright coral color. I thought this was gonna be so pretty somewhere in my home. So <laughs> in fact, while I was mixing this color, my daughter Miriam kept saying, so are you making that for me? Are you making that for my room? Can I put my toys in it? <laughs> so, I have a feeling she might hijack this if I try to decorate with it. It might end up in her room because she loved the color so much. But I'm just gonna give it two nice coats of this color, making sure it's nice and polished and finished. And then on the bottom, I painted it white because I wanted to have a nice finished look at the bottom. So here I am, I'm just taking some of this ticking stripe that's blue and tan, and I'm just gonna add that around to make sure that any staples where I stapled the frame to the base that doesn't scratch a table. It'll have a nice finished look at that point. Now I'm gonna take some of the rope from the Dollar Tree. I'm just wrapping it around and then to create a really nice nautical finished handle, I'm taking another piece of twine and I'm wrapping it around. You can see here that I start with a little bit of hot glue and then I just wrap, wrap, wrap. <laughs> like I'm wrapping, that was funny. And then um, I'm just gonna glue it off and finish that look and you're ready to display it somewhere in your home. These are our supplies we're gonna be using for our project today. We are gonna be making a lighthouse. We will need some different shapes of foam from the Dollar Tree, this cute glass jar that you can use for candles, this little fake light, some painter's tape, and then leftover pieces of canvas fabric. We're gonna go ahead and start by mounting the tall cone on top of the platform circle that is shaped and angled. 
they perfectly fit on top of each other which is why I came up with this idea to try making a lighthouse. We're going to take a long skewer stick and we are going to shove that down inside to give them some support. I hot glued these two pieces together and also added some E6000 just because the hot glue does have a tendency to melt some of the foam so I really wanted it to hold on really well. And then as I was all done getting those pieces together, I'm now going to take the canvas fabric that I had, and you saw that I cut a piece there, and I'm gonna just bring it over to the side so it's gonna be the right length for me to be able to wrap this cone shape. We're gonna add some hot glue, and then just go ahead and roll it all the way around, hot gluing and making sure you pull everything nice and tight. You can see that I had a little bit of buckling going on here between the two pieces, but I actually don't think that it ended up looking bad in the end and you'll see at the end results. But you can keep pulling this as tight as you want until you get it nice and smooth. I didn't care too much that it was a little buckled in the middle because like I said, the paint really does cover it up and it just looks so cute when we're done. So I snipped off the extra canvas fabric that I had on it and now I'm going to also cover the entire platform that the glass jar is going to be sitting on. This is the top of our lighthouse. I'm just going around the top and bottom with some round pieces of the canvas fabric and now I'm taking a long strip and I'm going to just glue that right onto the sides. This is going to allow me to paint it to have a nice smooth surface just like the base of our lighthouse. Now I want to create a little bit more support so I'm taking some of these zeros from the wooden letters that they have at the Dollar Tree, letters and numbers. I said zeros and then I said letters, that was funny. And I'm just gonna glue them down, going one direction and then going the other direction. And again, these are the zeros. You do not have to just use these. You could use popsicle sticks, but I just wanted to give it some more support for this top since it's gonna be holding a really heavy glass piece. And when I say heavy, it's all relative because you know, it's with this base that we have. We wanna make sure everything's nice and secure, not gonna to topple and break with time. Now to make it even stronger and to hide those wood pieces, I'm gonna take some rope and I'm just gonna wrap it around. And then while I'm already upside down, I'm gonna snip off the rest of that stick that I don't want to have popping out. We want this to be nice and flat at the bottom. And then I'm just gonna wrap around that rope a couple of times, making sure it's nice and secure on there. And then cutting it and making sure I finish nicely so everything is tucked nice and neat on our lighthouse. Once you've got that rope all on there, your next step is going to be to turn over the top and then we're gonna trace some circles to know where to put our next rope. This rope is gonna allow the jar to stay on the lighthouse without it falling off and then it's just gonna fit nice and snug on there. You want it to be able to be the width of the glass jar so it snugs in there and it can come back out when you want it to. Now I'm adding some hot glue and I'm just positioning my lighthouse onto this flat wood oval shape that they have in the craft section at the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to once again add some twine or some rope around the base of it. This is gonna end up giving it even more support and really bonding it to the wood. I also added in some E6000 at the bottom of this as well. I wanted to make sure I had that really good bond. Now that our lighthouse is all assembled, we are going to start painting. I'm gonna be painting my lighthouse blue, white, and gray, and I'm just taking a marker like you saw me doing there, and I created some stripes going up at an angle on this lighthouse. Now I'm going to go back and forth in the colors doing a white and a really pretty light gray going back and forth until I filled in all of those spaces. Make sure you take your time on this so that your lines are nice and straight as much as possible. I actually when I first drew my lines I didn't draw enough to be able to create the spacing to make the right amount of blue stripes and gray stripes. So just like I said, make sure you take your time and play with it so that you get it right. Then around the top where the platform is gonna be holding the glass, I am gonna just be doing some stripes on this. I thought that this would be really cute just to create a cute little pattern up there and add some blue. And then you're gonna see, funny enough, later on, I go back in and fill in the white spots 
with popsicle sticks because I ended up liking that even more. So you can paint your lighthouse however you want, just have fun with it. Now here I am, I'm taking that light gray color that I was talking about and I'm just going to fill in the other stripe and here you can see that the lighthouse has that little bit of buckling around it but there was something about it that reminded me of metal that kind of gets warped over time. I saw this a lot where I grew up where you know if metal had been left out for a long time it can get dented and rusted and then the city will go back in and paint over it again so <laughs> it was kind of funny that i actually really liked the little bit of buckling that it had going on again if this bothers you you can smooth it out even more but it didn't bother me i i don't know leave a comment down below to let me know if that would bother you in your projects because i know sometimes i could be a real big perfectionist about things but it just like i said it didn't bother me so weird i know okay now i'm adding some gray around the top platform and on the bottom side of the platform because i wanted to bring that color up in there too and then we are now going to take a birdhouse from the dollar tree and we are going to just pop off that bottom it came off pretty easy i used some pliers and then we're going to also snap off that little piece of wood that is coming out that a bird could sit on and then we're going to take some tongue depressor sticks and we're going to cut them on the size and to put them up in there to fill up that hole. We don't want that hole to be open just so that nothing tries to go and live in there. I don't know, <laughs> like a bird or a bug. I don't know. My house doesn't have bugs. That was like really weird for me to say that. Let's move on from that. <laughs> so now I'm going to add on some glue, wood glue and hot glue to make sure that it's bonded. Now at this point, while that's all dried and in place, we can move on to painting the base and the white on the house. So we are gonna just add that all over. And then I took some more popsicle sticks and created a really cute layered shingle look on the very top. I did three layers on both sides and I made the popsicle sticks a little longer so it looked kind of rugged. Then up here at the top, like I said, you can see that I went back and decided to paint the whole thing blue because I like the idea of putting the popsicle sticks as it being the blue is showing and then I had some wood so it was like a little casing around the top. And then to make sure that they all stay on nice and secure, I added some more hot glue behind the sticks around on the bottom and then I took some wire and wrapped some wire around that and glued little dots to hold it in place. Then going back to the house, I decided to take a popsicle stick and cut it down in half. So I had these really skinny, almost like toothpicks, pieces of wood. And I put that on the front. I just love how jagged and rough the roof line looks on this weathered little beach house that is next to a lighthouse. I don't know. I just think it looks so cute. Maybe it's just me, but whenever I make these kind of projects, you, I actually should probably let you hear my voice sometimes because I just get so giddy sometimes when I'm making these and things turn out the way that I want them to. Then at the top, we're going to just add a cute little topper with some E6000 and hot glue and you're ready to add a light and display it. Our next DIY are going to be using these long painter sticks that you can pick up from your home improvement stores and some twine or rope, whichever you want. Start by taking one of these painter sticks and you're going to cut it down right at the neck where the neck and the flat side meet up. And then I use it as a jumping point to make sure all of my sticks are cut to the right size. You're going to need some wood glue at this point and we have six at the base of the box and then we've got two at the sides that are the same as the base and then we've got two shorter ones at the head and the foot of this box where our handles are going to be. I'm taking the wood glue and I'm putting some dots all along it so I've got that long term hold and then I'm going to take some hot glue so that's a short term hold so it allows that wood glue to be able to dry and be really strong and sturdy with time. I'm just going back and forth until I've gotten through all six of those 
and then I'm going to start working on bringing up the sides of my cute tray box here. So I'm bringing up the sides just like I said, adding some of that. And if there's any glue that squirts out, I just take a wipey and smooth it away so it's nice and clean and finished. And then here on the ends you can see that I'm putting on the caps on the sides of it. And now to make it really strong, I'm going to take my staple gun and I'm going to just go around it at the joints where it matches up and add in some staples. I went about four on the long sides and then I went at the lineup point of every single stick on the end just to make sure they're all nice and secure in there. Then I took my drill and I drilled in four holes, two on each side so that I can put in some rope and make it look very coastal, beautiful. I can really see these in your bathrooms or because I know so many people say that they decorate their bathroom with a coastal theme. How pretty could this be on your counter somewhere in your bathroom if you have your makeup displayed on it or if you have just, you know, toiletries or whatever, some towels, maybe even a plant of some kind. I just think it would be so pretty or like you could use it on your coffee table in your living room, which is what I'm planning on doing with it to corral remote controls and just things like that. Now for one of those smaller boxes I decided to do a lighter color and I just think it's so cute when they're stacked inside of each other and then I thought to really step it up a notch and make it a little more special and custom I'm just taking some painters tape creating two lines one way and then two lines the other way to create a cute tic-tac-toe game. I just think this would be really sweet having this out on a table somewhere in your home to display whenever you have people coming over to visit or just for your kids or just family members in general. Then go ahead and tie off the handles and add a little bit of hot glue, making sure it stays in place and cut away the extra. This next project is going to be using these three canvases that are eight by 10 and then these jumbo sticks that I found at Walmart. I was so excited when I found these because I have been looking for something like this for a little while. These sticks are so huge that you can see that they can go either way on these canvases. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut away the fabric. You all have seen me do this a million times here on my channel. If you've been here for a while, I love using these frames because you can use that wood accent and be able to do it on a very nice budget. So go ahead and cut away the fabric so we can use that canvas fabric for another project on another day. And we're going to go ahead and pull away all of that excess that we don't need that's a wrapping around the canvases and then just continue to do that to the other other two frames. So now what we're going to do at this point, we're going to add some hot glue and we are going to just glue those right together and then we're going to do it to the other one as well. So we have a nice long piece that we're going to be working with and today we are going to be making a shutter. Now I think shutters are the cutest thing to use in decor. I love using them with layering and I just love how they look and you can paint them whatever color you want and really just I don't know, have a good time decorating your home with them. I think they're super cute for that farmhouse look. So what I'm gonna do is once I got my hot glue on there, I'm gonna staple gun them together. I'm gonna link my staple gun down below. I love my staple gun. I talk about it all the time here on my channel. I think it's something to add to your craft room when you're doing home decor pieces. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and take those jumbo sticks. We're gonna cut them down to size. You saw that I put it underneath the frame, created my cut lines, and now I'm just using some some scissors to cut them off. Make sure you use an old pair of scissors so you don't mess up your really nice ones. But once you've got that first template, you're going to go ahead and just trace them on to the other ones. Now I figured out I need about eight to nine inside each one of my frames. But the thing is, is I say eight to nine because it just depends on how close or wide you want those blades to be. If you want there to be more of a spacing, I would go with an eight versus if you want them tight, I would do more of a nine. So the very first one, you're gonna angle it down just so you saw me do here. And then you're gonna flip it over on the back side, and you're gonna add that supportive glue to the back so that it stays on there nice and secure. And just make sure you like the positioning before it dries. And then you're gonna flip over and you're gonna just keep adding on all of these popsicle sticks that look 
like shutter blades and you can see here that when you put them closer they don't have as much of a spacing between them so on this one I'm going to do eight of them so that you can see that it gives it a little bit of that spacing between the blades which I like that look but if you want them to be a little bit closer you can do nine and then you can just push them in a little bit tighter in there so it's just your preference on which one you like now I'm sure there's going to be some people who will say that you can go to the Habitat for Humanity Restore Home stores and it's true you can get these there but it just depends sometimes they still charge a lot for these there too and I made this shutter piece for about four dollars and I'll say 25 cents and it is just so cute I I personally really enjoyed this DIY if you like getting your hands on a project and you love that farmhouse look this is definitely a project to try plus the idea of it can be taken in so many different directions you can do so many more shutters you can do nine frames to create a three by three space and hang that up on a wall and put a wreath on it how adorable could that be there's just so many fun things now I will say it was so funny how much great minds think alike I have seen somebody do this and it came out right as I was filming this where you can take these and turn them into a lantern look. There's just a lot of fun things that you can do to create a really pretty shutter look. So just keep in mind that it's not just only a shutter that you can do with this. I have some other plans that I'm going to be doing with this technique and these big sticks. So just keep a look at if you're loving this idea. But once you get to the end of each one, make sure you hot glue the back side really well so they're all nice and secure. And then once you're all done with everything, you can go ahead and paint them. You can stain them. I decided to go with a rustic look because that's the look I'm going with for my decor here in my home. So I'm going to just add on some white paint and I'm going to just dry brush on the paint I don't want too much I want to still show some of that wood coming through I want them to look old so I'm just adding in some paint and taking my time and going over it and just having fun and making sure I'm getting in all the crevices that I want and then I decided to also add in some other colors as well I think it's important to make sure that when you're doing these if you're going for that rustic look to add in a little bit of a brown or a kind of a brownish gray color that really gives it that nice look that you're trying to get with that and or the other thing that's really cool too is that you can paint these a solid color like I mentioned earlier with the color theme that you have in your home so you can stack them up with a whole bunch of cute decor on a shelf or you can hang them on the wall there is just so many fun possibilities with these i love how they turned out so so much If you enjoyed this video and you made it all the way to the end, don't forget to come over on Instagram and say hello to me. If you try any of these DIYs, I would love to see them. Tag me over there on Instagram so I can see them and share them in my stories. Thanks so much for stopping by and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, bye friends.